the youth empowerment program with a particular emphasis on horticulture, which will be launched today in Khobabes, is wholeheartedly welcomed by the Municipal Council of Khobabes because it will complement other programs of the municipality aimed at job creation, poverty eradication, and youth empowerment. and privilege to introduce the direct beneficiaries of this green scheme but honorable allow me to before introducing them express our heartfelt gratitude to the government of the day the government of the republic of namibia who entrusted this initiative under the harabe prosperity plan to be implemented by the National Youth Council of Namibia through the Ministry of Youth. This clearly shows that as young Namibians, we can also contribute positively to our country and subsequently to our community. As young people, we are not leaders of tomorrow, but we are leaders of today, just responsible for tomorrow. Therefore, as young people, let us use social media to tell our good stories. Let us market this project. Let us market our products. Let us not be discouraged by those who want to discredit the Swapo led government. Let us be thankful for what we have and what we get and what we can improve on. Thus, we pledge our, our support to the developmental agenda of this government. And we pledge to guard, protect, and maintain this project. Now, I call the direct beneficiaries. I call them direct at the end of the day, the community of Khobabas will benefit, whether it's indirectly or whatever, but the community of Khobabas will benefit. But I will call the direct beneficiaries to this project, whom were selected from our own community, whom are going to be the custodians of this project, whom will benefit from them, the young people of Khobabas can benefit and the young people of Hobabas will make a difference in this country through them. And this is just the beginning of great things that can come to Hobabas town and to the region at large. Let me call them Mrs. Whitney Mugoha. As I call you, can you come to the front? Apra Mahele Malele Mahele Is it Mahele? Malehe, then it's wrongly spelled. Abraham Mahele, <laughs> Andreas Villon, Francis Richter, Clarence Huyeman, Theodora Peterson, and Franz Twakosen. There is one of them that will speak on behalf of the group Honorable Minister. So I'll give them the opportunity to do that now. 
through the director. I thank you. It is my pleasure and honor to give this short statement at this great occasion. On a behalf of you, self employed project beneficiary, I would like to impress our appreciations to the effort done by our government through the assisting structure of the youth development for the no path thought with the aim of creating employment. The Youth Self-Help Employment Project will recruit 84 young people from all 121 constituency of Namibia. If all the beneficiaries will take up their responsibility and ownership of this project, I'm sure we will reach greater height and the project will continue to grow every time we recruit new beneficiaries. I will urge fellow young people to take the project seriously, maintain it for others to benefit also. We are indeed very lucky to find ourselves as part of this great initiative by the government. This is a clear testimony that our government is commitment to the development and well-being of our young people. Master of the ceremony, let me finally take this opportunity to wish all the beneficiary, as they are here behind me, behind me for the youth self-improvement project strength and wisdom. I remember hard working never kills. So let us work hard and make this successful. I thank you all. To share a platform with one of the icons of our liberation struggle, a lady called Agnes Yongarero. To many of you, maybe you don't know that she's a liberation icon. And she is one of those people who selflessly have given up a young life for liberating this country while other young people were engaging themselves in activities that normally young people are engaging themselves. She was, for example, engaging herself in trying to bring about the liberation of motherland and land. That's land. And today I'm sure that other late liberation icons like Denshi Ungarero, her own husband, Andon Luboski, Nathaniel Mahulini, when they look down from wherever they are, they are very proud to see that young people of this soil are going back to the basics, working on the soil, working on the land, and restoring by so doing the dignity of our people that have been long lost. They are restoring the dignity in the sense that when we work on the land, we produce. And when we produce, we liberate ourselves from decking, from asking, from always holding out our hands in receiving. Working on the land as a basic where you really come in touch with the land that you are made from. Because the Bible tells us that we are made and people are burying us, like my father, the pastor there. They say, dust you are and to dust you will return. So we are coming in touch with the basics where we're coming from. The past lockdown under the pandemic, uh, uh, the virus, the COVID virus, have taught us lessons as a nation. When the borders were closed, and at one stage, we were actually wondering where our next meal was going to come from. The shops ran empty, there were no veggies, there were no eggs, there were no cheese, there were no whatever in shops. It was running empty. And it made us realize that, in fact, it's high time for us to start producing for ourselves to start taking care of ourselves. And therefore, this initiative of horticulture is an initiative towards self-realization, towards self-reliance. We're going to make sure that come whatever circumstances, we can provide for ourselves as a region. Whatever circumstances, the youth is saying we are ready to provide for the region. We are ready to restore the dignity of our people. Let me tell you one day, one story. Once when I was a school principal, went to a farmer to beg for assistance for my school. 
And the farmer asked us, me and my delegation, which political party are you? And we were very proud. We all raised hands. So I'm poor, like in a classroom, you know. And the guy brought three big checkbooks, the big ones. It was the time of checkbooks. And we were smiling. We thought we were going to leave, to leave that side with three checks. And he said, do you know Sam Neoma? We said, yes, we know Sam Neoma. We were like in the classroom. Packing nicely for this money. We were very obedient people that day. And he asked us, what did Sam Neoma fight for? We said, independence. And he asked, independence from what? <laughs> we said, <laughs> we said from South Africa. And he said, no, don't talk about South Africa. Say independence from us. <laughs> and we said, yeah, independence from you. And then he asked us, do you know how disappointed Sam Nyoma must be now? To know yeah, that after he fought for independence, you still want to be dependent. And we realized the impact thereof. That as much as we have been fighting for independence, we still go back into history and still call out for the pots of Egypt and say, we still want to be dependent. And we were ashamed. And he told us, I'm not going to give you any single penny. And to us, it was a lesson, a very expensive lesson and shameful lesson. And today, when you hear that the country is independent for 30 years, yet we cannot produce for ourselves. Yet government have to send trucks full of maize meal and foodstuff to resettle farmers. Farmers that government have resettled to take care of themselves and the nation, they still have to be provided for. Government they still have to send trucks to communal farmers with cattle and sheep and goats to feed them still. Now, government is supposed to feed the urban hungry. Now, with horticulture, with intensive farming, government also have no reason to even feed people in towns. Because we can make backyard gardens. We can all embark in onto backyard gardens. The replication of this project, Honorable Tebele, I believe the next council meeting you go with a motion and say such a project costs so much that every constituency has such a project. <laughs> That's a challenge, Honorable Tabelli. It's a challenge that we must take seriously because this is only but one. But if we replicate it in every one of our constituencies, when it comes to providing for the food bank, we can provide for our own food bank. In every constituency, there must be a food bank. We produce our, our produce. Obama's municipality must have in every locality, even smaller ones, and backyard gardens, where people can take care of their own food needs, so that we don't hide behind excuses we are hungry, the truck did not come. <laughs> Those miss meal that government is giving, the millions must come from our backyard gardens, providing them to whoever the miller, so that we have then maize. Even if you eat the mealy, you're already eating maize. We all just don't realize this. You will hear people say, I don't eat maize, but he's eating millies. Millies is maize. So we must replicate this, honorable members, community members. You don't need a lot of water to do this. We have seen this thing being done in those black bags and in pot plants where you don't need a lot of water. And we must replicate it. And I'm happy that amongst the trainees, there is one young man that we took from the streets the Minister of Gender, 
and that we took to Plessis Plus Honorable Minister. And we really want Plessis Plus Comrade Minister. The office of the governor is having the incubation up and we want to do acro incubation. We want to plant tomatoes there and take those tomatoes and turn them into tomato paste and so on and so on and so on. And do value addition. We want to do value addition. We want to make sure that we come up with startup businesses of young people. The incubation hub must incubate startups in acro processing. And then we have the incubation hub there in town that will soon be running. We have started with meat production, training in meat produce. The 5th of October, we're going to start with another training that will be sponsored by MakerSafe. Those people will be trained. They will be trained physically, start cutting meat, start making polonies, so that we have startup business. A startup business of another type of nature. It's heartening, disheartening for a governor and even a councillor, I suppose, and the incoming councillors, to see our people at every corner behind a tree, under a tree, behind a corner, doing business in undignified circumstances. We must change those things. Mm -hmm. We can no longer come from the same neighborhoods and yet don't do things to change those people that we are coming from. So the young man that I spoke about, we took him from uh, the streets of Venduk and Kobabes, and he says, plus is plus. Now he's undergoing this. I want us to pay special attention to these six people, and particularly him, to, to, to bring a message of hope forth, that nothing is lost. We should never give up on human potential. We should never write off anyone. And we should make sure that that boy becomes a role model, a beautiful story to be told. A beautiful story to be told, we must nurture him together with the other six, together with the others. Dreaming is free and it's for everyone. But doing is not for everyone. The government that I'm talking about is a government of not dreams and talks, but a government of delivering. And you can see with the horticulture that we are busy delivering and we are committed to deliver. So when we said we can deliver, take the track records of government and believe in it. It's only unfortunate that sometimes we reverse the gains of government. The one who does not need still come and stand in the queue and say, I'm hungry while you still have. We should also become selfless and let the next person come in queue who really needs it. suffer the most. The youth are the people who will go to bed hungry. We know all those things. We know the percentages. I'm not going to repeat those things. But we've got a, as a government, we've got a strategy. And the strategy is to develop and harness this human resource capacity to contribute towards employment creation and self-employment driven, self-employment driven economy for the people, the youth. You know, 
If you are hungry, and I said it yesterday and I'll repeat it again. If you're hungry, you don't stand tall. You go and lie down because you don't have any energy. You are hungry. But when you have been fed and your stomach is full and you are, have got enough energy, that's a time you now get up and want to do other things, isn't it? That is what it is. The objective of this project, the self-employment project, particularly horticulture that we are launching today, is to increase the skills, productivity, and income potential of today and tomorrow's out of the school youth. Many a times we think that agriculture is for old people, isn't it? Let's be honest, youth. Agriculture is for old people, eh? Yeah, that is what you think. Agriculture, you must always be in the offices, but the old people must produce the food so that you can eat. Let's change that uh, perception. Let's come to the point where we say, youth will fill this nation. Okay? Can we agree? Yes. Youth will feed us, the old people. Yes. yes, let's work in the gardens. Let's produce. COVID-19 came. And as Namibians, we have learned one thing. And that is everything we have been importing. Every, all those things we have been importing from other places. Like the governor said, was locked out, it might happen again. It might happen again. So let's start and think about projects for ourselves. Now we are starting with horticulture. We can plant tomatoes, carrots, mealies, uh, potatoes, you name it, and we can eat. But let me ask men and women here, how many of you can do sewing, yeah? How many? There's one, two, three, only four, five, six, okay. Now, why I'm asking, why I'm asking? If you people can sew, sewing, yeah? Clothing, why do we import school uniforms from South Africa, yeah? No, 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 no. Talk to your councillors, talk to your governor, talk to your people and say, we have got this company, us, and we want to start with such and such a school uniforms. And we expand and we expand, isn't it? Why can't we do it? Why do we wait for South Africa to, to, to give us school uniforms? Is it necessary? No. Now, unfortunately, as Namibians, we are too, too much dependent on other countries to feed us, to clothe us, to whatever. Let's change, please. Let's change, please. I'm asking you. Let's change. Let's produce our own school uniforms. Let's produce our own food. Let's build our own houses. And for that all, training is available. If you don't know where the training is, I'm going coming again. NYS, NYC, the whole Ministry of Youth Sport, Sport, Youth and National Service, they can assist you. I'm very delighted that we are in a place called Omaheke. This, this is a place which we call also Kettle Country, Omaheke region, Kettle Country. The governor said it already. Let's have the worst, the what? The, 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 the worst, let's have the Biltong, let's have the everything from Omaheke. And let Omaheke feed the others also. Let's do it. I'm, I'm sure most of you have got cattle or goats or sheep or whatever, but you have got cattle. 
You know what? If we can work properly nicely together, the, the skin of that kettle, the skin of the kettle you slaughter, and we eat the meat, what do you do with the skin? What do we do with the skin? We can do many things. Tell me which article. Hey, hey, hey. Listen, listen. That's why we are always begging, because we don't listen. <laughs> Tell me which article and which constitution and which little thing is written. School shoes must be black. Where is it? Where is it written? Why can't it be from the skins of the cattle we are uh, slaughtering? Where is it written? We like copying from other countries where we can do our own things. There are people who manufacture shoes from the skins of the bokeh or, or kettle or whatever. We can do it. Why must we always rely on others? Please, young people, I'm talking to you. Listen to me. Listen to me. There are projects for you. There are things out there for you where you can clothe yourself, your whole family, the whole Omaheke region. And when you clothe other people, it means it's income for you. It's wealth. You can become billionaires if you can just think properly. You can become billionaires, means a lot of money you can have. Let's think out of the box, young people, please. Today, we are going to launch horticulture project. I want to launch the other project in December, and another one in February, and another one in May. But somebody must think out of the box and go to the leadership of Omaheke at all levels and ask, help us. We want to produce t-shirts. We want to start with whatever the thing is. And you will be assisted. And when you are assisted, you become, you will be having something in your pocket for yourself, for your siblings, mother, father, uncle, family, and the greater nation of Omaheke. And at the end, if Omaheke starts, I know, Namibians, we like copying. If, um, if Omaheke starts, the other Ochodon Juba will start, and the other region and the other region. And at the end of the day, we can export, and not only for ourselves. We can do it. Is it true? We can do it, but please, young people, don't sit and wait for the governor to come to you or call you and say, what do you want? Take your plans to the governor, to the councillor, to the whoever at different levels so that those people can assist you. Once you are assisted, and once you have all the things you want, you have got the food, we'll come in and, 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 and buy the food from you. We've got the shoes, which I've been referring to. We've got, you've got the t-shirts, you've got all those things. School uniforms, whatever. Later, us, the old people, will come and say, Wash Anje, Tupao, yeah? We'll come and ask from you. At the moment, you are asking from us. But the days will come if you are bright and fast and out of the box, think, out of the box singer, uh, uh, thinker, we will come and we will come and beg from you and say, to go at the corners. And then you will say, no, I've got enough. Where you are coming from, I'll give you. Please, young people, all I want to say is, this is one project, but I want more and more projects from you. And I want you to, as young people, we are saying you are the leaders of today. And we are preparing you for tomorrow. But if you cannot show us that you can do something for yourself, how can we trust you? 
we can, how can we trust you? How can we give you a land, a country, if you cannot show us that you can do something for yourself? As I conclude, let us take cognizance that youth are Namibia's greatest assets. Whether you like it or not, but it is. You are the greatest assets of our country. The youth population is rapidly growing and expected to double by 2050. And if properly harness this increase in the working age population could support increased productivity and stronger and more inclusive economic growth in Namibia. This project will contribute to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, as it directly supports SDG 8 on inclusive, inclusive growth, productive employment, and decent work for all, SDG 4, on equitable education and skills development, and SDG 1, on ending poverty. And with that, I am delighted to say, reaping the benefits of the demographic dividend depends on investment in job creation and human capital development. With this, I officially launched the Youth Self-Employment Horticulture Project in Hobabes Town, Hobabes constituency in Omaheke region, and I thank you.